Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and more specifically, this is Think Tech Tech Talks, where we talk about tech. We talk about tech with guys like Attila Ceres. Attila used to be a host for Think Tech, so we know him well for many years. And uh, he is um, kind of an expert on what's going on in information technology, and especially in information technology that affects our business and residential you know, communities here. Uh, welcome to the show, Attila. Nice to see your smiling face. Oh, sure. Well, that's that's one of the advantages of working from home. You get to smile more, right? <laughs> well, you know, truth is, a lot of people are not smiling at all these days, no matter what the circumstances, because they're worried sick about what's going on. Uh, that's not a pun. And before the show, we, we were talking about, um, you know, you asked me whether we talked to frontline medical, medical uh, health care people, and not recently. And I wanted to get your, you know, your understanding of what they are saying. What are they, what are they telling us about, you know, the medical process, the medical experience with uh, COVID patients? Uh, can you tell me that again? Well, I, I can't tell you all the, all the, you know, MD type stuff because I'm not a doctor. But to be fair, uh, we are talking with all the business leaders in the community. And uh, some of them are in medicine. And uh, they're telling us that there's going to be a lot of new information coming out uh, over the next few weeks as the, uh, the virus is becoming better known. Um, obviously, there's rumors uh, circulating about uh, cross-contamination between species. Uh, they're talking about uh, the kind of uh, things that are happening to people as they catch it and and the process of it going through the body and what it does to the body. Um, so, uh, I, you know, we're hearing everything from uh, the fact that there's uh, there, there are people who are having heart attacks because the, the, uh, the combination of how the virus uh, is able to get into the lungs and then it affects the temperature and then the heart, uh, heart spikes. And uh, we're also hearing that people who are healthy uh are uh, are succumbing to the virus and and uh you know and dying from it so uh it's not really clear what this is and uh you know i think that the the best advice that i can give is the advice you already know wash your hands stay indoors and stay away from anything until you're sure of what uh what this is and uh, there's a good medical solution to uh to this to this problem uh, that's the that's the advice that, uh, or should I say, that's the mandate we have for our staff is all of us are meant to stay away from each other because this can affect the business if one person catches it and spreads it to someone else. So, um, you know, let's just let's just do what we can to stay safe. And also, this climate of fear uh, is unfortunately going to be around for a while, and that's where uh, we're getting really busy. Is all the scams and all the problems that are happening. Jay mentioned that uh, you folks went through the uh, Hawaiian electric scam. You know, that's not a new one, uh, but the, a lot of the COVID ones are scams that have already been around for a long time and they're just adapting it to COVID. And the reason that they're adapting it is because they know that these scams work. And I know it's despicable, right? You know, we have this, this uh, fear climate, the world is on lockdown, everyone's afraid for their jobs. Uh, a lot of people are unemployed and uh, these these criminals are taking advantage of this circumstance to steal our money, to steal our information, and we're just at the beginning of all this, right? I mean, you have to become more conscious of our circumstance and what you're going to do to protect yourself from these guys taking advantage of you. Well, that's pretty scary. By the way, despicable is the is the right word. You know, taking advantage of the misfortune of others is despicable or worse. And uh, I, I hope they are prosecuted and thrown in the, in the who's gal for a long time. I wouldn't catch some of them to make examples. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's going to happen. That's the human condition, I suppose. Not everybody is, uh, is straight and honest, although most of us are. Uh, let's talk about some of the scenarios. In the case of the Hawaiian Electric, they, what they do is they call up and say, oh, your electric bill, your electric uh, service is about to be terminated because you didn't pay the bill. Pay us. Okay, and then uh, the guys get ripped off. They don't want to have their service terminated. Um, and that's simple enough, but a lot of people fall for it, so much so that Hawaiian Electric wants to put the word out not to, not to take those calls. Those calls are not legitimate. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of other things. You've written them up in your newsletter. 
Uh, can we talk about some of them? G give us a hypothetical. Uh, give us a, you know, somebody who is at home behaving himself uh, in a, you know, in a lockdown or rather a shelter in, shelter in place circumstance, um, being a good person, you know, making his contribution to the, the community effort to drop the curve. And then something happens. It's a call. It's an email. What happens? What is your favorite scam today, Attila? You know, you, you hit on a key point, which was that we, we go through a lot of scams and we try to just educate the community. Truth be told, there are so many scams right now that it's kind of hard to pick what we should even tell people about. So we try to pick the ones that you can actually do something about. Um, you know, I, and, and people are sending me scams like new ones daily. So that Hawaiian electric one, right? That one's new, but it's been around for a while, right? Um, some scams that we're seeing are Red Cross impersonators. So, uh, and this is going on not just uh, locally, but uh, internationally, where folks show up, they say, hey, we're, we're volunteers with the Red Cross and we're selling these COVID-19 testing kits. And it's just, you know, a Ziploc bag, a couple of Q-tips inside. And they say, look, you know, we're just gonna put this up your nose. <clears throat> we're gonna get your contact info and we'll let you know if you got COVID. $50, please. And it works. Uh, so they're either doing that or uh, they are just they show up at your house. They show up at your house. So you, at you know, your, your house. house is closed. You're staying inside. You're sheltering in place. You're not even going outside except to shop for food. And these guys actually show up at your house. That should be a telltale thing right there. Nobody, nobody yeah. you know, does door to door in, a, in the time of, a, of, a, of an epidemic, no? That should be telltale. You should see that happening, see that coming. If they were real, uh, it would be by some method other than knocking on your door. No? Yeah, you would think, and you know, probably a good place to start is, you know, if you see someone showing up at your door that you don't recognize, maybe a good sneeze or cough into your <laughs> elbow is a good way to kind of see how see how committed they are to their <laughs> Extend your hand out to shake it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you better wash your hands right, right afterward. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get too close. Uh, you know, these guys are also saying that they're from the Red Cross and they'll just turn around and just straight up rob you. Um, I like think robbery, last week, what was like that? Physical robbery. Yeah, they'll physical just break robbery. into your place. <clears throat> yeah, that, that can, let, can we dwell on that just for a minute? You know, it's very interesting because there's not a lot of people in the streets. Um, you know, and uh, there's something dangerous about that. Um, so you could be taking a walk, for example, in a quiet neighborhood, and all of a sudden there's somebody driving around the neighborhood. You know, next door neighborhood, uh, internet online is kind of interesting in this. Somebody driving in the neighborhood and, and you're alone, and it's them and you, and there's nobody else around. Um, you know, you could call for help. I'm not sure it would mean that much. Nobody, want, nobody wants to come out. So I think you run into the risk of that kind of thing, where they knock on your door. We had one in this in this area like that. Uh, they just, you know, knocked on the door, pushed their way in, and they robbed the house under cover of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I think there's a certain risk of robbery, as you say, not so much burglary because everybody's home, <laughs> but robbery. <laughs> and so you can't you can't deal with anybody you don't know. There it is. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I mean, this is not new. So let, let's just be clear about scams, right? Think, things that work for hundreds of years, people are gonna do over and over again. So there's a story of thieves oil. I don't know if you've heard of it. We heard of the story no. of thieves oil? No, no. It's this stuff right here. I have a little okay. video on it where I talk about the story. In the 1400s, at the time of the bubonic plague, four thieves were caught breaking into, um, into sick people's homes and stealing their possessions, right? So they're sick in bed with the bubonic plague, they go inside, they steal their stuff, they're caught. The judge says, look, you know, the, the penalty for this is being burned at the stake. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how is it that you were able to rob all these homes without catching the bubonic plague yourself? And in exchange for the information, they said, okay, uh, we'll, we'll give you the secret, but we don't want to be burned at the stake. So the judge said, okay, give us your secret. <clears throat> secret is these guys, these four thieves were out of work uh, spice traders. And they would take a mix of uh, essential oils, 
that was, uh, I think it was lavender, eucalyptus, clove, and uh, I think uh, something else. And they would take that, that, that four, those four spices and put it over their mouth in a mask, right? So they put the oil on there, they put the oil, there's the oil, they put it on their mask, they put it on their wrists and over their, uh, over their ears, and they wouldn't catch the plague. And uh, sure enough, the uh, judge uh, who, uh, you know, stuck to his word, he did not uh, burn them at the stake. He ended up instead uh, hanging them but because it was still a crime. But after that, you know, the doctor, you know, the doctors you see with the long beak, right, and those goggles, you know, they're kind of like yeah. school scary. Yeah. That's yeah. what they had. They had the little rag stuffed into that beak, and they would put it all over themselves, and that's how they were able to see patients during the time of the bubonic plague. So... That's the story of thieves oil, and you can get it on your, uh, you know, diffuser and, and put it into your environment. Good way to get rid of those little particulates. It's a, uh, it's an antimicrobial. <laughs> it's an antimicrobial. <laughs> that should tell you this stuff's been around for a long time, and and you know, in fact, a lot of this stuff kind of goes multi generational. I mean, the reason that I'm in cybersecurity myself is because my family. Uh, was uh, was escaping terrorists, uh, the Russian terrorists in particular, uh, from Hungary back in the 50s, moved here. And then now those terrorists are still around. And, uh, you know, we're doing our best to protect the community from them. They're still Russian, unfortunately, a lot of them are. Uh, and they've moved into cyberspace. So, you know, that's my story as to why I'm in cybersecurity in the first place. And, uh, you know, these stories, they just go on and on and on for, for generations. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, scams, you know, they just gotten more sophisticated, but it's the same stuff. Um, the dark web, which is that invisible hidden part of the Internet where, um, you know, threat actors live, they, they, they're all the pedophiles, terrorists, and, and everyone else who's bad does their drug trading and human trafficking on there. They're selling uh, COVID-19 stuff on there. Uh, and I think we could show a couple of the pictures if uh, you want to bring them up, but we can talk about yeah, sure. them. They're fascinating because these are just hitting the dark web, which means they're going to start hitting public notice very soon. Uh, they're selling coronavirus vaccines. So these are actual image captures from the dark web. Um, uh, it's from Monopoly Marketplace, but uh, it's probably the most you know popular place right now to get this stuff. Uh, we're seeing <clears throat> coronavirus, COVID-19 infected blood that they're selling <clears throat> and this is kind of a, uh, an older scam right so they, they used to sell hiv infected blood and they say hey you can get this stuff you can get my blood and spread it all over the poor people's neighborhoods i mean it's really it's really mean um but uh you know they're saying you can spread the virus yourself uh there's some other scams there uh if you want to go to the next slide where they're um yeah where they have the COVID 19 quick tests which really looks like a pregnancy test over there with you know some ambiguous uh, lettering on there so you can probably pee on it and they'll tell you you don't have covid but you're probably not pregnant either um so they're selling those <laughs> <things>. <laughs> um, <laughs> or it could tell you that you do have covid and you're pregnant <laughs> oh that, that'd be the, that's the worst right there let's not wish that on anyone uh one thing we didn't have a picture of over here was the covid19 sound uh machine so the idea is that you get like a sound machine and makes a certain tone and then it destroys the COVID virus. Uh, so we're seeing scams like that. I think that's probably my, one of my more favorite ones because, you know, that's, that's the last thing you want to have is some sounds like that, but, um, uh, probably annoy your dog. You know, <laughs> turn that on. Um, and, uh, let's see here. You know, uh, you know oh, the, these things you're talking about, I caught the, on the first slide, for the quote vaccine end quote that's an amazing picture amazing i mean like this what we've been all waiting for yeah a thousand dollars something a thousand dollars for this then you can save your life and everybody you know <clears throat> it's quite amazing but but you got to get them the money so we you gonna use your credit card you can use paypal what are you going to do and if you do that and you find it's a hoax um don't you have some protection to reverse the transaction, even though you were really being dumb about it. Um, I mean, th this is this is so gross <laughs> that you think that you could reverse it if they are collecting this money in the ordinary fashion. How does that work? So uh, you've hit on a, an important point, which is how does how do the criminals get paid? Yeah. Uh, so if you're buying and selling things on the dark web, that's all done through Bitcoin. You know uh, all about Bitcoin. 
Uh, so well, uh, it's, it's one, anonymous. <laughs> it's all you anonymous. don't know who's getting. You don't know who's getting your money. <laughs> that's right, and it and it fluctuates in value, and uh, it's very difficult to to actually trace some of that. Now, the good news is, if you do fall for a big sc big scam, um, we work uh, pretty closely with the FBI. So I encourage anyone who has uh, fallen for a scam to register that scam at the internet at the IC3 which is the uh, FBI's um, uh, Internet Complaint Center. And <clears throat> that's where you can register if there's been an issue. Uh, and then uh, if you want to reach out to us, we can get in touch with the local office and we can work together. But the first step is to register that crime on IC3. Um, then afterward, um, the, the other method of payment is, of course, bank transfer. If the bank transfer is caught within 72 hours, uh, it can often be stopped or reversed, at least some part of it. <clears throat> a uh, recent scam out of one of the uh, Florida um, local, um, was it just one of those small uh, localities in Florida, uh, one of the state offices, uh, they were scanned out of $750,000. Oh, wow. uh, and they were, they were able to intercept that uh, within 72 hours, and they got like everything but $15,000 back. So it was, it was pretty good. Uh, so uh, there is kind of that delay when it comes to ACH transfers. And then the third way, which is probably the, the easiest and the most unexciting, is the gift cards. And that's that's an old scam, right? So, uh, you know, folks will, will call up and say, hey, you know, the, we are the IRS and we're going to come get you unless you pay us your back taxes and gift cards and go to Walmart and, and send us your gift card numbers. So there's, there is some of that going on as well, prepaid cards, that kind of stuff. Um, which should be a red flag for you too, by the way. If anyone asks you to, to pay for something via a gift card, uh, uh, that's just, you know, or a prepaid card, just don't do it right there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of these stuff, you know, yeah, they're scams, but you know what it is? When people are afraid, they'll believe just about anything. And you got to keep your wits around about you during this time of crisis. When people are afraid, they're going to believe things that they might not normally believe that they're under threat when they're really not in, in any sort of danger. And mm -hmm. anything that, that the key thing you want to look out for is anything that creates a sense of urgency, right? That's your big red flag that it's a scam. You need to call us right now. Otherwise your power is going to get cut off, which by the way, they're calling from 808 numbers. So they are calling from local numbers. Anyone calling you to say, Hey, you know, uh, limited supply of COVID-19 vaccines or texting, te uh, testing kits, pay us now to reserve your spot. No, it's not going to happen, right? Limited supply of COVID-19 uh, sound producing devices. Don't do that. Uh, I, and also look out for price gouging, right? Um, I, I went on eBay. I probably should have sent this to you guys as well. I found a four pack of, um, I think it was Bounty toilet paper uh, that sold for $9,200 two weeks ago. I mean, people are just uh, going crazy. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Well, yeah. yeah. Four pack of toilet paper for 9200 bucks. And that's expensive. That's probably, you know, $10 a square at that point. <clears throat> but um, so people are going and making choices that they wouldn't normally do. So think about anything that's a sense of urgency, right? I got to get my toilet paper. No, you'll be fine. Most of the world doesn't use toilet paper the way we do. There are other options. <laughs> um, you know, if if they're if they're pushing for limited supply on things, that's your that's your key to look to stand back for a moment and say, like, look, wait a minute. This could be a scam that could be trying to take advantage of me. And in this kind of fragile economy, it's a one two punch. And this is not just individuals with businesses. Right. Imagine if uh, if, uh, you know, the economy is has a downturn and then the business has an infection and is required to close down either a branch or multiple branches or the head office because there's been a COVID-19 outbreak, right? That could be the end of that business, whether they've been around 100 years or not. So and, high uh, stakes. You, it's it's very high stakes. And, and imagine if it's a one, two, three punch, which by the way, statistically, we're still not out of the clear. We still have climate change on the board. Um, you know, what if we have a COVID-19 outbreak, everyone's, uh, you know, the economy's down, uh, you have a COVID-19 at your business outbreak, and now you're you're forced to completely shut down operations and lay off everyone. And then uh, an environmental disaster occurs, which you name it. You know, there's there's a movie about every single one. 
It yeah. could happen. <laughs> we got a lot yeah. of movies lately. But but you know, I wanted yeah. to raise one other thing. It's this is this is the snake oil, the snake oil thing. You know, um, for example, I mean, this is at the extreme example, but so uh, Donald Trump is uh, selling, he's hawking uh, hydro, what is it, uh, hydro uh, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. Yeah, I, I, is, is, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's hawking it, he's repeating it over and over again and, and telling everybody that, you know, it works. And, you know, there's no, and, and they, there's no evidence that it works on a trial basis, on a, you know, a pharmaceutical trial. Uh, and of course, uh, Fauci is to say, wait, 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 you know, there's no, there's no evidence of that. Um, and yet, I, I believe there's probably places on the dark web and otherwise, maybe everywhere, where you can buy this stuff, maybe at an inflated price, and you can take his advice and do it. And his advice is, it's, it's not backed up by medical science, sorry. Um, so the you know, question there is, if you open the market to people who will charge what the market will bear, and they'll buy this stuff, that's just as much a scam, isn't it? It's snake oil. We don't know that it really works. It's snake oil. And, and unfortunately, in this case, it's being sold by our illustrious president. Uh, and, and you go from there to other snake oil salesmen who are trying to sell you other things. I'll give you another example. Um, in hospitals, they use ultraviolet light to kill viruses and other and bacteria and whatnot. And they have expensive machinery that'll go that'll send it into a room like a robot and scan the whole room, throw light all over the room, and then come out again. Nobody's supposed to be in the room while the ultraviolet light is being because that could be deleterious to your health. Um, and these are expensive. Now there are lots of uh smaller units on the market see ads for them all the time about how they're going to do this for you at home nobody knows the manufacturers nobody knows the efficacy of these items um nobody knows whether it works and yet there it is for 50 bucks 100 bucks and sometimes much more um now that may not be uh you know completely wrong a complete lie it's based on the fact that hospital use hospitals use ultraviolet light but somebody's taking advantage. It's kind of a semi-scam. What do you think? I don't think this is anything new. I mean, uh, corporations do this on a, <laughs> this, is, this is what marketing is all about, right? Um, and uh, you're absolutely right about uh, price gouging. In fact, we have, a, we have a slide up that will show the uh, chloroquine being sold for, you know, $1,000 for a dose. And um, yeah, there it is. Same with medical masks, actually. The N N95 masks, uh, we saw them going, you can see them there on the dark web, going for, uh, what is that, a $280 each. You know, so, um, you know, you'll see them going even even today on eBay for $130 uh, to $200 a piece. We're just, you know, a little mask that would, would, would be $2 on any other given day, two months ago. Yeah. yeah. So you, you'll do people who are price gouging, they're also hoarding and then uh, selling them, uh, selling them on the uh, on the black market. So we saw, I'm sure you saw it also on the news how the um, how they were doing raids on 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 these guys who were hoarding N95 masks. And um, you know, if you talk to some of these medical workers, you know, kind of circling back to how we started, uh, many of them are saying, "Look, you know, we used to put on a new mask before we see every patient. Now we're just using the same mask." through the entire shift. So if they come across a patient who has uh, COVID, then they're, it's gonna be on their mask and they could potentially expose the next patient who doesn't have COVID to the virus. So, yeah. you know, who, who very, knows very what, what's gonna happen? The whole mask affair is very troublesome because the, the government has been telling us, had been telling us for weeks that you only needed a mask if you had the disease, uh, but, not, not if you didn't have the disease. That was wrong. That's not good advice. I mean, I don't think you had to be a, a PhD in research to know that's not good advice. And yet the country was following that because the government was telling them. I think the real reason was there weren't enough masks. This is the way you cover up the fact you don't have enough masks. Uh, it's, it's really tragic. The same thing with the, with the tests. So, oh, there's just tests everywhere, but they're not everywhere. That's not true. Anyway, I think this is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really big problem because it opens up uh, to hoarding. 
it opens up to price gouging. So I, I wonder if, if you ever get into this, uh, Attila, um, what about price gouging? What about hoarding? It, it should be against the law. I'm not sure that there are statutes in every state that make it against the law, um, but certainly at a time like this, you really wish it were against the law. Is it against the law? Uh, I believe it is. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a, an attorney, obviously, but I believe that uh, price gouging is still against the law. So uh, you, you shouldn't be doing it. Plus, you know, I, I don't know if you believe in karma or not, but uh, things eventually kind of catch up to you. And um, there's, there's, a, there's a legitimate thing called in business called markup, which is understood. Uh, but if your markup is, you know, 10,000%, then even in business, you know, the market will speak and, and turn you away. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it reminds me of Katrina. Remember how there was the, the folks were showing up with generators that they had purchased in neighboring states and were showing up in Katrina and selling the generators for outrageous sums? They got shut down and arrested because they were they always illegal. <clears throat> and, um, you know, um, the, the, the whole idea of, of snake oil, which is what you were asking about before, it's been around a long time. I mean, we got Disney Plus and uh, we turned on Pete's Dragon the other day with my son because, you know, I remember seeing it as a kid and it's, it's a goofy movie, but they have a snake oil salesman in there who's just classic, like curly mustache, top hat, the whole thing. And he's talking about these products, you know, like, oh, look at this. This is from France. You can trust me. Look at this testimonial. It's all the same marketing formula from day one. Dude, is there a good testimonial? Is there an exotic story behind the product? Um, is it in short supply? These are the kind of marketing things that we see over and over again from, from big corporations to, uh, to the guys who are selling the, the little bottles with the, with the mystery cure inside of them, right? <laughs> So, um, I mean, my only advice is not to focus on the negative, right? Don't focus on the scams. They're going to keep coming and they, they're always going to keep coming. When this is all over, they're still going to keep coming. They have been coming before this, so don't worry about that. So use common sense and focus on strengthening, right? Uh, from a health perspective, can you strengthen your immune system from a... Um, from a uh, you know from a cyber security perspective, can you strengthen your overall uh, hygiene and security posture to minimize the th the potential problem that threat actors can have of you? Have you uh, brushed up on your security education on how to identify scams? Have you brushed up on all these things that are the most important to keeping your health, to keeping your uh, security, all that healthy and uh, and safe? I mean, you, you got to focus on the safety bit. And so, um, you know, uh, we can all do what we can to, uh, to, uh, to stay away from the virus, but you never know, you know, someone can just sneeze and you'll walk through it five minutes later and who knows you're exposed. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard to focus on those kind of unknowns, but it's really easy to focus on how you can strengthen your security and your health. And use common sense. <clears throat> but I'd like to add a point though, and I'd like your reaction to my point. Uh, you know, this is a country of um, individualism. It's a country of buyer beware. It's a country of uh, there's a sucker born every every minute. And uh, you know, we've seen this in our in our history, in our in our business history, in our economics history. Uh, if you can get it, do it. Let the other guy shake his head later. Um, and a lot of people got rich in the history of this country doing that. Um, but we are in a transformation. We are transforming our way of doing business, our economy, our way of engaging with other people, uh, everything. This is a transformation of the country. Uh, nobody can doubt that. And at the end of that transformation, we're gonna be different. And one of the things I would like to see different is no more of this kind of rambunctious individualism, this exceptionalism, this you can cheat them if you can, um, you know, uh, this one born every minute kind of thing. I would like to see the, the laws, federal laws, uh, maybe state laws, clamp down on this sort of thing. So if, if you're caught doing a scam, you pay a price. If you're caught doing something 
uh, dishonest or uh, misleading on the internet, you pay a price. And after a while, we'll discourage this kind of conduct. But I think we have to change our system. And I think maybe that may happen in the difficulties of, of this uh, pandemic. What do you think? I think anyone who's a target will always be a target. If uh, you're talking about change, well, if you're interested in targeting rich Americans, and there's a lot few of them, uh, fewer Am rich Americans out there, <laughs> that's a change right there. You're going to see a lot less scams coming across because these guys are not operating within our borders. Um, <laughs> After a while, there'll be nobody with any money, and therefore crime much. will not crime will not pay anymore. No. Uh, Angela, thank you very much. Angela Ceres, uh, what's the name of your company and your website? I want to give you that opportunity. Sure. Uh, our company is called Silanda. Um, yes, I know it sounds like a fantastic place. My name is Attila, president of Silanda. I know it's not made up, I promise. Silanda is short for cybersecurity, LAN, and data. And uh, we help people with, uh, you know, implementing best practices to protect their businesses uh, because cybersecurity is hard and we're here to help. Thank you, Attila. Always nice to talk to you. Um, we're done okay. now. We run out of time, but I sure enjoy this conversation. And I only have one piece of advice for you. Go wash your hands. <laughs> 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 Good advice for everyone. Aloha. <laughs>